Hey there. Hey there, friends, viewers, writers. We got a special episode today. Yes, that's right. We got a special episode. It's the mother in law's 98 Honda Civic LX. It's the four door model. Yay. Uh, problem is, is that the transmission line blew from the radiator. Uh, while I was, after I had uh, fixed it. I might mention it in an earlier video, but <laughs> um, I thought I had fixed it and I was out the door. I look on the ground, there's transmission fluid all over. Pop the hood open, find it that blown from the radiator. So now I have the lovely job of having to pull the radiator out to examine it. So this is going to kind of be a tutorial of how to. Uh, first thing you do, get your vehicles either jacked up or on a ramp. Which as you can tell, I did. Um, next is to block the rear tires, which I have not done. But as I said before, I went down over to LKQ in another episode. Picked up these lovely things. I think they came inside uh, GMC Jimmy's. Uh, could have been uh, Jeep Cherokees and whatever they were. Um, didn't really cost me anything. Um, they considered it to be metal. They couldn't classify it, so they just gave it to me. Gave me all five of them, which is nice. Works out uh, blocking up the vehicles. That way I don't have to search around for wood. And they actually hold up pretty well. Uh, they stick right into the ground. They got like a rubber base on one end, and another end has got metal. As you can see, you can see where the rubber ends on some of these. But it keeps it locked in place. Hopefully you saw that. Keeps it locked in place so that way I can go ahead and uh, block the vehicles and not have much to worry about. Being a 98 Civic with under, I want to say 98,000 miles on it. She's, ha she's the original owner. Um, while the car was underneath the lease uh, for the first two years the transmission went out like one year after she had the vehicle and I told her to take it over there she wouldn't have to pay for anything turned out I was right and they covered all the costs and replaced the transmission because it went out <sighs> engine hasn't been replaced at all it's the original OEM engine So, yeah, uh, it's either me or my brother-in-law that's done the work or a garage that's done the work. But now that she's retired, she can't really afford a garage. She wants a newer vehicle, but I don't see how she's going to be able to afford it, considering she just paid off her house and has no money. <laughs> so, I guess who's at it? Wild Rider. Be checking her fluids because just looking at it right now looks like she needs brake fluid on her vehicle and when i actually pulled the car out of gear felt like the parking brakes were on because <laughs> it had been sitting so long and hadn't been driven winter changing condensation rust attacking yeah fun times so that's what we'll do so i'm um, going to show you a few things here in order to get the car from her house to my house I did this right here you'll see that I loop the transmission line around so that way I could get the vehicle here rather than paying about a couple hundred bucks to have it towed I'm not about to pay someone to tow a vehicle or use a tow strap to do it because that's freaking dangerous and I've done it before and I don't want to do it again to be able to do this properly, you got to drain the radiator out. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll drain the radiator out. I happen to have a pan for that. And I'll do that. And then we'll go on from there. I got this. All right, currently uh, what I got is these hose clamps here. Uh, I picked them up over at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. I think I picked them both up for about under 20 bucks. What they do is they uh, close off the hose so that way you don't have any backsplash and you can keep the minimal amount of uh, what's going on here. Now I pressed this several times. I popped the drain plug from underneath the radiator 
So that way I could uh, drain out the radiator coolant so much of what I could. Next I'll be uh, removing parts off of here, pulling off the clamps, as you can see. I'll also be uh, disconnecting the reservoir here for the coolant and let's see if I can find, yep. And this is the connector for the fan, I'll disconnect that as well. And finally I'll end up uh, pulling off this bolt right here to remove the radiator because everything's set up inside here. As you can see this moves. In fact this is not attached, it's just meant to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's got a rubber grommet here. So we'll try to minimize as much uh, as possible of getting this taken care of. GoPro, stop recording. One eternity later. As you may have guessed, things on vehicles never go as what they intend to be. This sucker, the only 10 millimeter bolt there, um, is rusted out. And now I'm working on getting the penetrating, the rust penetrating um, lubricant to go through and do its job for me to help me out. But unfortunately, what I'll probably have to end up doing is chopping and drilling through and going at that part. I really don't want to end up replacing this. So I'll probably end up having to slowly drill that out. So, simple job. Now I'm turned into about a couple of hours. <laughs> a few moments later. Human one, bolt zero. Or car zero as it is. So what I had to do was I ended up uh, getting a cutoff saw putting it down through here so that way it would heat up heat it up that actually did a lot better than actually using a torch so after I was able to do that I grabbed a pair of vice grips that I had used previously which rounded off the head here and I was able to get this off I discovered that the other one is about ready to do the same thing too it's rust all the way around right, let's see if I can get you in there for a closer look as you can see, it's already rusted all the way through on here. So it's only a matter of time. It looks like it's rusted on the other side as well. So it's only a matter of time before this whole thing actually comes apart. Now the nice thing is, is that this is actually screwed down. So this will be a cheap fix for the mother-in-law. So I don't have to go over to the junkyard and get the required parts, I can just go over to like an AutoZone or O'Reilly's or whatever. Okay, so after much determination, I went online and determined that they don't actually sell the brass fittings for that. In fact, they uh, expect everything to be completely intact when you pulled it off. So, <laughs> um, radiator only came up to about under $70. Plus, of course, I had to get coolant for it. And just so happened on one of their shelves, I was checking out, and I happened to have the right type of coolant I needed for Honda's. So, I got that. All in all, this job's probably going to cost me about 100 bucks, Maybe about four hours total. I'm just uh, taking my time at it, but I got the parts. Next will be reassembling. As you can see here, uh, this is what I was talking about. We needed these. Looks like everything's going to be able to fit. And as these are tightened down on here, shouldn't have any problems. This is what the new radiator looks like. So as you see, I got it all back together. Next is to insert it into the vehicle. Had no problems at all. Everything tightened up. Tightened up these. Just to be just in case everything's all tightened up the way it's supposed to so we'll just go ahead and stick that back inside the car and then uh, fill it up with fluids like we're supposed to well as you can tell I got the radiator in I got everything topped off fluids taken care of so that's pretty much it for this uh, Car's fan finally kicked on after about half an hour running at idle. That's very good. Sound of Civics got a 1.6 uh, liter engine inside them and they actually hold up quite well. Uh, this vehicle's had its 
oil changed at the intervals that it's supposed to. Mother-in-law took, took good care of that. Fortunately, she wasn't good at checking the oil, the tire pressure on her tires. Um, let's see. Let's see, I found one, t the lowest I found one tire was at 5 PSI. Then another one at 7 PSI. Then the rest of them were inside the teens. And these tires are rated at, with the tire that's on here, 51 PSI in normal road conditions inside cold weather. So this would be considered normal condition so it's supposed to be at 51 <laughs> so i just uh finished uh adding air to that so the car is now ready to go and there shouldn't be any further problems engine runs revs right up like it's supposed to uh no transmission problems at all oil managed to stay in i topped it off with a, a quart and it showed up right on the dipstick like it's supposed to yeah i got a smudge mark on there but yes, uh, so pretty much the car is done, and now I'm just going to drop it off to her, and that's pretty much it of this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. Like, subscribe, go ahead and kick, click on that notifications button. I release uh, videos every Monday and Wednesday, and as always, ride safe. I'll see you in the next ride.